Hey guys, how's it going? BCHD here and welcome back to Season 2 of the part of my Road to Glory career mode on FIFA 19. We're up to episode number 3 and have we got an action-packed episode for you guys today. We've got some big Serie A matches up against the likes of Lazio, AC Milan, Inter Milan, Roma. And we've got some big Europa League games to get through and yeah, what an episode we have. Half an hour of content for you guys after last week's episode. wasn't Didn't have too many games in it. This episode decided to return the favor, give you guys a lot of games in this episode. This is the first of many in this one. It's a Serie A game against Lazio. And yeah, we've been on fire recently. So has that man David, the Canadian, our striker, really stepping up this season as we've got a home game against Lazio at the Stadio. Stadio Tardini. In real life, this one finished, I believe it was 2-0 to Lazio. Don't quote me on that one, but just off, based off memory, maybe 1-0 or 2-0, something like that. But we're going into this one with our strongest starting 11. We're trying to compete with the big boys this year, trying to qualify for the Champions League, and that's definitely going to help us with an opening goal from Sandro Tonali, the man from Brescia in real life, called up to the national team in the past few weeks and he's doing well for us man he's one of our best players this year or we've signed in this part of my career mode and he's doing well for us as he's getting a goal here against Lazio a beautiful work he, he worked his way into the box beautifully and put it past Stracosha the Lazio goalkeeper and gets his season started off pretty well and he's gotten a goal there and we go 1-0 up at home against Lazio which is a big it's a great start it's a dream start for us as we are trying to again last season we didn't really do that well against the big teams this season we're trying to turn that around here as Taith Chong gets a shot off David couldn't get the rebound header and we are all over Lazio at the moment and yeah we're trying to get a get a bit of rhythm going against the big teams as Diego Lainez makes his way into the box and what a run from the Mexican you guys are saying this guy is so good and what a signing he's turning out to be he's scoring for us left right and center he's a great down that right hand side and Lainez the Mexican man from Club America is paying off well here I mean we signed him on a cheap deal and he's paying it back in goal in dividends he's going goals getting assists and he's put slotted that one beautifully past the Lazio defense and past Thomas Strakosha in net and we go 2-0 up against Lazio here and we are off to a dream start against a, a club that is pretty much in the top six top five usually in most seasons and unfortunately for Lazio couldn't convert the chance there but we bring on Kubo, Pellegri and Roche in uh, our scout future star from last season as we continue on, we're on Lazio here. Tonali attempts his second goal here, but unfortunately couldn't get it into the right-hand corner. And that's how the game would end. We finish off 2-0. Tonali, who's been playing extremely well for us lately, getting a goal in the first half. And it's Lane as the new summer signing that you guys wanted. Uh, he started off getting a goal here against Lazio in the second half, making it 2-0. And it's a comfortable display from us at home at the Stadio Enio Tardini, making it a bit of a fortress as well in uh, for our games. And we go into yet another big match. We've pretty much got it. We've got a different line. We've got Shaparenko in there. We've got Gomes. We got uh, Weyer at striker as well. So we've got a big, big game. And it's at home again against AC Milan. Yes. It doesn't get easy in this episode. We've got Lazio and AC Milan straight up in Serie A. So two massive games for us. Career, um, season-defining games, sorry, uh, for us in this career mode. And we've got Sancho starting in there as well. Got a really decent side coming up against AC Milan. We've got James in there and Pardew. Uh, Chong makes another start in that center attack and midfield role, but it's AC Milan crossing the ball in and it's Jorgensen for AC Milan. He signed for them, I'm pretty sure, this season and gets them off to a great start here in Parma. 15 minutes in, AC Milan go 1-0 up and I believe it was a cross in from one of the wingers, maybe Suzo, 
and AC Milan get the dream start here at at Parma Stadium. Yeah, it was a cross, maybe deflected in from one of our defenders, and Jorgensen just wins that out against James, our right back. We go 1-0 down, unfortunately, and we wanted to try to do well against the bigger teams. Jaden Sancho missing a big chance there. Unfortunately, couldn't kill that one into the bottom left, but it's Petzella down this left-hand side, crosses the ball in, and unfortunately, it's Reyna meeting the header there from Weyer. And we couldn't get the equaliser there, but it's Plitzardi making a great save. And it's a shot off the post from Halilovic, the man at AC Milan, the wonder kid from a few years gone by. As we continue on trying to get this equaliser, it's Timothy Weyer. Uh, couldn't get the equaliser there, but Plitzardi makes another great save there. He's keeping us in this one. He's kept it to 1-0. And uh, he's kept us in the race. He's kept us alive as we subbed on Brignola and Biabiani. Biabiani makes his way into the box. He's past the AC Milan defenders. And he slotted it through the legs of Reyna. Pepe Reyna absolutely getting done there. And he slid that one beneath him. He couldn't do much about that. Powerful shot right down the middle. And it's gone straight through the legs of the Spaniard. Former Liverpool keeper. And yeah, he's got his legs wide open there. There, couldn't get down quick enough and it's Jonathan Biabiani. I mean he is 31 he's proving his age here but he's proving his experience at the same time getting a massive goal for us getting the equalizer we're looking to go on and try to get the three points here but unfortunately that's not how it would end it's Parma getting the draw here against against AC Milan I mean that is respectable I mean we won against Lazio we drew against AC Milan four points out of those two games is highly highly respectable as Pietro Pellegri goes up to a 72 overall we continue to train Chong and away are as we go into the next few games of this episode. You can see there the Serie A player of the month. September shortlist is consisted of two Padma players. It's Sandro Tonali, very well deserved, as well as David, who's been our main man this season in terms of scoring goals. I mean, he's scoring a lot of goals compared to last season. And Tonali, I mean, one of the best players I've used on career mode this year. And we go into a Europa League match against FC Sion at home at the Stadio Enio Tardini. We've got three games in a row here that we've played at home. I mean, great to see and this is a really good big Europa League game at home I mean we got all the pressure to win against the Swiss and we got a big lineup coming up against FC Sion we need to get the three points here these are the games we need to be winning and it's pretty much our first team we got way up top Shaparenko in there Lainez uh, based off his great form recently you can see the table there we've gotten three points out of our first game Borussia Mönchengladbach Olympiacos drawing and yeah, we're hopefully trying to get the win here at home. We've got Chong, Shaparenko, Tonali. They're starting to do really well for us. And I think this was an episode of, of players really improving for us as Kevin Ruig is down this right hand side. Gives it off to Jaden Sancho and just goes wide in the 20th minute. But Petzella is on the end of this one. It's Shaparenko takes a shot and it's a floating one. It seemed to stay in the air forever. And the FCC on keeper couldn't keep it out. Looped over him from the Ukrainian Shaparenko. He's really putting a shift in midfield for us. Didn't expect him to get a goal, but he ends up just taking a pot shot from outside the box. It ends up going in and you can see he goes straight down the middle just slightly dips at the end, loops over the keeper's head. And Shaparenko with a strike. And yeah, it looks like it's going over, but it just dips at the last second. Shaparenko has got us off to a great start here in the Europa League at home. It's our first home game in the Europa League as we started off away in Greece in the last episode as Taith Chong goes down this left-hand side. He's going to cross the ball into that man, Diego Lainez. And the Mexican has gotten his first goal in Europe. It's his second goal this episode and the Mexican is absolutely on fire. Lainez, what a signing. He's probably one of the signings of this season and Taith Chong with a great cross slotting it through those FCC on defenders and great control from Lainez. Absolutely just set it up for himself on his left foot and the Sion keeper couldn't keep it out. We go 2-0 up in the Europa League at home showing the home fans what we're made of as you can see here 
FC Sion get a goal back here. The Swiss are back in this one right before half time, and we can't go without conceding a goal in the first half. They get a goal back to make it 2 1, and they're right back in this just as I thought it's going to be dead and buried. Uh, it ends up being 2 1. They end up pulling a goal back. Blitzardi, after his great game against AC Milan, couldn't keep that one out. He didn't really have that much to do this game, and yeah, we take another shot here against Sion, they, we, we end up getting a free kick in this one, um, it's the 85th minute, Taith Chong is on the end of it, we pass it off to Pietro Pellegri, he comes on in the second half and gets his first goal for Parma and in the Europa League, I mean, I haven't really played him that much besides maybe in simulations, but playing with him in game, that's probably his first goal for Parma. I mean, poor defending from FC Sion. Couldn't see that one coming. They thought uh, Tay Chong was going to take the shot there, but he set it up beautifully for Pietro Pellegri. We end up finishing this game 3-1 to the good. Pellegri wanted to get another shot there uh, to make a 4-1, but unfortunately for him, we end up finishing the game 3-1 victors. And yeah, what a game from us. What a performance at home in the Europa League. We go into an away game. Our first away game of the episode against Torino at uh, the Olympic Stadium in Torino. We go into this one and guys... I'm not gonna lie, we have a lot of we have a lot of games to get through this episode, and this game was not one to get excited about in the terms of you know goals and action because nothing really happened in this game, and I'm just gonna cut it short because we got a really really massive Europa League game that I want you guys to see and a Serie A game towards the end of the episode against Roma and Borussia Mönchengladbach. Those two games are absolutely insane. As you can see, they were sitting currently fifth in the Serie A. So a win here would move us up to first place. And I decided I might as well just cut this pretty much the whole game out and just show you the goal that happened because not really much happened in this game against Torino away from home in Serie A. Not really one of the highlights of this episode. So I've decided to show you what happened. It was nil-nil the whole game. The 88th minute came along and it was a cross from the CP units. Thiago Falque, the Spanish winger for Torino, getting a goal there for them in the 88th minute, killing us off and making it one nil for the Torino fans and players, I mean, it wasn't really much of a great game. Not really many highlights to show you guys. We had a kind of a rotated team from that Europa League matchup against Sion. So we rested a lot of players. Pellegrini's in there. Gomes was in there. And Plitzardi, unfortunately, the header just goes above him. Couldn't put his hands up in time. And we end up losing 1-0 to Torino. Unfortunately, it's our first loss of the episode. And considering we won against Lazio, we drew against AC Milan, I was at least expecting a draw out of this one. But unfortunately for us, was not going to happen. And we end up taking the L here in Torino. We couldn't get the goal back with three minutes of added time. And we're going to move straight into the next match of today's episode. So after that horrible performance in Torino, we got the we got the pretty much the main squad back together. But we got Pellegrini starting up top this time. We got Tonali, Shaparenko, Chong returning in midfield. In form, Sancho and Lainez on either side of the wings. We got a big big Serie A game against Inter Milan at home. So this game is probably another season defining game are we going to challenge for the top four or are we going to be just outside like we always well not always are but we did were last season are we going to change things around and be more competitive against the top four top five sides and prove to the league that we aren't here to mess around we're here for champions league football and hopefully we do qualify it for that next season if it's winning the europa league or if it's coming fourth in Serie A, we the main goal this season is to qualify for champions league as you can see, they were currently sitting in 8th after that loss against Torino. But it's that man Mauro Icardi. We signed him in our Chelsea career mode. If you guys don't watch that, make sure to check it out on the channel after you finish watching this episode. But it's a big game against Inter. They signed Deli Ali. They still got Nain Golan. They got Mauro Icardi up top. So... Oh, we got a lot of defending to do in this game, but it's pretty much our main team. Pietro Pellegrini gets his first start after his goal in the Europa League against Sion. I decided to reward him with a start against uh, Inter Milan, and it's pretty much the same team. I mean, Correa, 
Alderweireld from Tottenham, Deli Ali in there, Icardi still playing, and Tonali takes a shot, and it would have gotten us off to the great start against Inter Milan, we were dreaming of, but unfortunately comes off the post, we get a header with Pellegrini and just goes over, so a few warning shots, a few scares to Inter Milan and their defense, and uh, we do a great tackle there, but it's Plitzardi making the save against Icardi, and we go into the next highlights, as you can see there, Asamoah just missing that chance, but Tonali trying to slot the ball through, it's a it's a heavy first touch from Nangolan setting up Icardi, and I brought out Plitzardi to stop Icardi, but he chipped it over the goal, and unfortunately for them, they couldn't get uh, the goal to break the deadlock. Plitzardi makes another great save there. He's been having a few really good games. He's improved a lot from last season and the beginning of the season, but we get a well-earned 0-0 draw against Inter Milan, and I mean, Plitzardi, obviously, probably the man of the match for us. Uh, maybe even a Romagna or Ampadu defended really, really well as we have a Europa League match against Borussia Mönchengladbach, and... I wanted to play this so bad, but I decided to simulate this one. I mean, we're at home. We have the home advantage. Gomes, Mergia starting in there. Uh, pretty much the same line. We've got Weyer starting as well, but we're taking on Borussia Mönchengladbach, one of the hardest teams in our group at the Stadio Enio Tardini. And ha Thorgan Hazard misses a penalty. Tona Tonali gets a yellow card, but it's Gomes getting us off to a great start there. In the 49th minute, getting the one nil, uh, getting us 1-0 ahead, but unfortunately, player... For Borussia Mönchengladbach gets the goal in the 69th minute, 20 minutes later, to get the equaliser. We share the spoils here in Italy, but uh, because this is the third match day, we go into the fourth match day against Borussia Mönchengladbach, playing them in Germany. So, guys, if you want to stick around this episode, watch that game. It is probably the best game of the season. But we've got a few more games to get to, and then we'll play in the Europa League against Borussia Mönchengladbach, and that will be the last episode, uh, the last game of this episode. But it's currently Benevento, Hellas Verona, and Sampdoria in the relegation zone. As you can see, though, we're sitting in ninth, uh, not too far away from the top. I mean, we're a win away from the top four. So uh, we're going to go into this next game against Sampdoria away from home, I believe. We're going to simulate this one. We're currently sitting in ninth with 14 points. Napoli and Inter are just ahead of us. Tonino, who beat us, are uh, in sixth. And we're going into this one against Sampdoria. Relegation battlers at the moment. Uh, we are away at the Luigi Ferrari Stadium in Genoa. And yeah, we've put up a bit of a second string team here in Soki. May is getting a start in there. Galliolo has made his way back in the team. Puig, uh, uh, Kubo, Bia Biani, and David are in there. Puig gets us off to a great start there in the 18th minute, going 1 0 up in the first half. But it's Ramirez right before half time getting a goal back there. He did pick up a yellow card as well for Sampdoria, and he gets a second, putting us 2 1 down. And Chong comes on a, well, he was starting, he didn't come off the bench, getting a goal in the 67th to equalize things, and we don't get the winner there, we share the spoils in Genoa, and it's a 2-2 draw against Parma and Sampdoria, a game which we should have really won, I mean, they were they're in the relegation zone, but unfortunately, those are the hardest games of the season, the teams that are below you, unfortunately, but uh, Stanley and Soki, uh, he's out for two months, he picked up a training injury, and it's our player we picked up uh, last episode as a backup defender, he's going to be out for two months, uh, we're going to see if that hurts us or not, because we're a bit lacking of centre-backs, uh, so we're going to see if Nsoki can quickly recover and return back into the team or how long it's going to take him. But Jaden Sancho is finally at an 80 overall. we got our strongest team in this one to face Roma at the Stadio Enio Tardini. And we go into this one, hopefully, with another massive home game. Like, we've had home games, four home games so far. Two of them have been against AC Milan and Lazio. We had a home game against Inter. And now we have a home game against Roma. So, I mean, the, the the fixture list isn't treating us well at the moment. We're giving us all these hard teams. We've literally had Sampdoria and Torino away, which aren't which aren't easy teams. I mean, they're still pretty decent teams in Serie A. And all our home games have been against top four sides. You can see there Roma signed Juan Mata from Manchester United as well. So they've got a bit of quality in their team. They've added uh, to their role as well so uh, we've got a big game ahead of us and this game is just this episode is full of big games we've got our first starting 11 here Tonali, Chong, Merja in the midfield, Weya Sancho and Lainez on the right hand side Romani is in defense and Padu as well 
and of course it's Plitzardi in goal. You can see how Roma line up their chic up top one matter in there as well as Tonali slots the ball through to Lainez. And based on the form he's on at the moment, you'd expect him to finish that one up easy. But the first half passes, not much really happened as Weyer drags the ball back, holds it up beautifully. Tonali slots the ball through to Tahith Chong. And we get the opener here against Roma, 48 minutes in. And it's the man from Holland, the man from Manchester United. He's solidified his uh, spot in the starting 11. The cam, the uh, should be a winger. I mean, he can play cam, but we've been deploying him as a center attacking midfielder this season and he's proving his worthy with a goal against uh, Roma at home and it's a beautiful left footed finesse shot he's strong foot he slotted that one home and we go 1-0 up against the Romans as you can see here we're kind of defending to save our lives here at the moment 77 minutes in and Roma get a corner we do a few substitutions bringing on a few players such as Gomes Brignola as well we're trying to clear this corner Roma still have it we can't clear it to save our lives as it uh, moves to Corridge Corridge slots through Patrick Schick knows Perotti and Plizzardi with a great save. He's been having a great episode so far, making a few key saves as we enter in the last few minutes. Plizzardi handles the ball out and we end up conceding. I swear I was holding the R1 button so he throws it further or whatever, makes it a flare throw. And unfortunately for us, I mean, Roma get a cheap goal. Plitzardi hasn't made a mistake all episode. Just has been one of the players of the episode. And unfortunately, gives it straight through to Juan Mata. He puts it through to Cruz. And Roma get the equaliser. But straight off kickoff in the 89th minute. Shaparenko slots through a beautiful ball into Timothy Weyer. And we end up getting... The goal here to make a 2-1 in the 90th minute at the death against Roma. We literally just got conceded on. We go straight off kickoff. And it's Timothy Weyer. Comes up clutch for us again. The American is loving his time here in Serie A with Parma. And that pass from Shaparenko. That's going to be the assist of the season. The Ukrainian has come into his own in this center midfield position. And it was Timothy Weyer one-on-one. -on -one, kept his cool and slotted it past Mirante there. We get the 2-1 victory. Three points. All three points wrapped up at home. And we get another big win against the top four side at home. And yeah, we're really uh, sending a message out to the rest of Serie A that we are not here to play around. I mean, Weyer getting the winning goal there. Our signing this season has proved really well. And yeah, what a finish to the game. I mean, the game didn't really have much in it. Uh, uh, Pellegri goes up to a 73 there in some training, but the game really didn't really didn't have much action and the last few minutes what a dramatic finish we have our last game against Borussia Mönchengladbach in Germany in the Europa League as you can see they were sitting on top with seven points Borussia Mönchengladbach with five and yeah uh, it's going to be a top two battle here in the Europa League it's the fourth match day and you can see there we've got a game against Genoa which will simulate after the Borussia Mönchengladbach game away from home and the next episode will start off with Napoli away at the San Paolo so I mean these games are getting harder and harder as you can see here we are going into this one with trying to put our strongest team up against them this is our first I wanted to play this for many reasons I wanted to simulate the home game and play this one this is our first European away day at an actual stadium. Borussia Mönchengladbach Stadium has been in FIFA, I think, ever since FIFA 17, if I'm not wrong. But yeah, Borussia Mönchengladbach Stadium is in the game, and it's our first Europa League European away day at an actual stadium. We go to Germany, to Mönchengladbach, and it's Borussia Park we are playing in. Parma, uh, big, big game. I mean, you know, you can see the lights there, nice green lights for Borussia Mönchengladbach. This is our first proper European away day experience in the Europa League. This is what the Europa League is all about, going to different countries, going to different stadiums. You can see there, the lights at Borussia Park are green. I mean, it's just a stadium you don't get to play in every day, and I decided we might as well play in it. You can see our lineup here, Bia Biani, Gomes, and David up top, Shaparenko, Brignola, and Puig in there as well. Galliolo's at centre-back along with Mai, the German. Uh, he's from a, uh, 
Bayern Munich, I believe. So he'll be facing off against fellow German opposition. And it's Cornet putting the ball through to player. Player scored against us in the last game. And it's Amati of all players getting Borussia Mönchengladbach off to a great start here at home. And they go 1-0 up. Amate smashes the ball past Plitzardi. Couldn't do much about that one. Too much power. And Borussia Mönchengladbach go 1-0 up. Within five minutes, Plitzardi. Yeah, just that shot was way too powerful. Poor defending from us. I slid there with Pellegrini. And yeah, just a great shot from the former Leicester City man with his left foot just smashes that one home. Maya couldn't block it. And Plitzardi, to be fair to him, nearly got a hand to it. But unfortunately for him, couldn't get a finger to it. And we continue on as we give the ball off to David. And he couldn't slot that away. It's a Borussia Mönchengladbach keeper getting his hand to that one. And we couldn't get the equaliser in the 15th minute there. As you can see there, Borussia Mönchengladbach hit the crossbar. And they continue on the attack, trying to get this second goal as Cornet gets the ball and shoots. And Plitzardi was there to meet it as Gomes gets a chance. He puts it through to Ricky Puig. He cuts back, cuts back again and takes a shot. And it's Jan Sommer there to meet the ball. As we continue on the attack, Shaparenko takes a shot and he hits the post, unfortunately. And Mai gets a chance off the corner there. The German playing on home soil can't get a goal against former. Uh, opposition as we continue on here. It's Dorgan Hazard dribbling his way through our defense. And the man we signed in our Chelsea career mode comes back to haunt us here in our part of my career mode in the Europa League. Uh, Eden Hazard's brother has absolutely torn our defense apart, dribbled through us like butter, and he's gotten his side off to a 2 0 lead in the 41st minute here. A little 1 2 with his uh, P there. And he gets the finesse shot off there. Plitzardi couldn't save that one. Borussia Mönchengladbach go 2-0 uh, up at Borussia Park. But we're into the second half. He's Jonathan Biabiani getting his pace past the defenders. Cuts inside. The left foot shot. And he's gotten us back into this one. Making it 2-1. You can see the Parma away fans going absolutely mental there. Uh, the ones that have travelled from Italy have uh, absolutely loving this goal. As you can see there, Jonathan Biabiani with a great run. And he scored our first goal in the Europa League. I believe he's our top scorer so far in the Europa League. Borussia Mönchengladbach can't keep that one out. Soma actually got a hand to it. But we got a goal back there. We're continuing on the attack. We bring on Brignola and he puts another ball through to Biabiani. He's going to cut inside. He gives it off to Brignola. Brignola's going to square it. And it's that man, Jonathan David, the can. Canadian has absolutely loving life this season in Parma Colors, and he's ma he's our main man up top. Didn't really do much in the first half besides that uh, chance he had to slot the ball through and get the equalizer. But he's gotten the equalizer, not 1-1. One, one. He's made it 2-2 two, two here after Brignola, a lovely 1-2 with Biabiani. Slots it back to David and he converts successfully. He's our poacher in the box and he puts it past Sommer. And we go from 2-0 down. We made it 2-2. Roche comes on, our scout future star. And he's off to a great start here. 85th minute, left-hand side. He crosses the ball in. Uh, nothing much really happened here. But all of a sudden, we see a, a Rose gets gets a card for some reason. I thought it was from an earlier challenge uh, that the referee penalized him for. And they're showing the replay here. I can't really see what Rose has done, but apparently it's a penalty. We've been gifted a penalty, and even I couldn't believe it. I was literally didn't even know what happened. We get gifted a penalty, and it's that man, Jonathan David, getting his second goal of the game, getting... The goal to make it 3-2 after being 2-0 down. We've made it 3-2 here in Germany. The traveling part of my fans are loving life after we were 2-0 down. We are dead and buried at half time. And David, we've been gifted a penalty from nothing. Uh, Rose moving from Tottenham to Borussia Mönchengladbach has conceded a penalty here. And David has gotten his second goal of the game two, uh, from 2-0 down. He's made it 3-2. And Borussia Mönchengladbach trying to get the equalizer here. Zachar Zachariah, Zachariah uh, getting the shot off there. But Plutzardi was there to meet it. They get a corner at the end of the game. We successfully clear it. And what a game. That's 100%. The game of the season. 
Parma getting all three points away at Borussia Mönchengladbach in Germany. We travel back to Italy with all three points and that makes us group leaders at the moment. Ten points and it's pretty much solidified our chances of getting out of the group and progressing to the round of 32. After being 2-0 down, honestly, I couldn't believe we got back in it. Uh, that we're going to get back in it and you can see the table there we're with 10 points Borussia Mönchengladbach are with five and yeah the last two games against Olympiakos and Sion are going to be very interesting because we can pretty much have a chance to finish first and get quote-unquote easier opposition in the round of 32 but that game has defined our Europa League season we are serious contenders for this title and it looks like in group L we'll finish first we've still got two games to go so we'll see what happens there but oh my god that game is honestly I could not wait to show you guys that game 3-2 from 2-0 down we made the ultimate comeback in the second half but we have a game against Genoa away we recently visited uh, the Luigi Ferraris in a simulation uh, against Sampdoria, we ended up getting the 2-2 draw there. Well, let's see how we do against Genoa. Lapadula gets them off to a great start there, getting it 1-0 in the 14th minute. We continue on this simulation. Sancho gets the equaliser in the 37th, right before half time. Sandro and Crisito pick up yellow cards, but Piontek comes on for Genoa. We continue on with the simulation. It's Timothy Weyer getting the second goal there in the 73rd minute. It's going to solidify the three points for us in Serie A. Much needed points after we drew a few games against Inter and Sampdoria. We got the three points against Genoa. And uh, yeah, Timothy Weyer going up to a 75 overall in training. And he is doing really well in this season and we're going to end off the episode there what an end we got a 90th minute winner against Rome after we just conceded we came back from 2-0 down to beat Borussia Mönchengladbach 3-2 on their own patch in Germany we got a game coming up against Napoli at home it's another massive home game against the top four side and it's going to be a fifth versus sixth battle as we're both on 21 points we're both in Europa League positionings and if we win this game we could go to second in the table it's Juventus on top, Cagliari, Sassuolo and Atalanta make up the top four, Napoli and Parma, we are right outside the top four in sixth position, drawn with Napoli in fifth, Torino and Inter are right beneath us and yeah that's how the table looks 11 games into the season, we're obviously aiming for Champions League positioning so fourth would be an absolute dream but that is going to be it for part of my episode number three, season number two. What an episode, guys. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, smack a like on the video. Subscribe for some more FIFA 19 Karimo content coming at you guys on the regular. Follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. And I'll catch you guys on the very next video.